Several months ago, I came across the 5 a.m. podcast and my eyes just lit up because for someone who has started their day at 5 a.m. for nearly the past decade, I wanted to hear all about the 5 a.m. podcast and Jeff Sanders. So I am really excited to have Mr. Jeff Sanders, the, the author, the host of the 5 a.m. Miracle. Joining me today, we're going to be talking about mornings, how we can get the most out of our mornings and the benefits uh, to our productivity, the benefits to the rest of our day by waking up bright and early. So, Jeff, thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you, Scott. It's excited to be here today. So tell me a little bit about yourself, Jeff. Uh, tell me a bit about your story and how did you get into helping others be more productive? Uh, that's a great question. And the whole thing kind of happened by accident for me. I was working a day job about probably six years ago or so. And I had my full-time job. I was building a side business, which is what I do now with my podcast and blogging and, and all the other things I do. But I also had a marathon to train for. And so with a nine to five job, side business, marathon training, my life was just crazy busy. I had a lot to get done, which is like most people, we all have busy lives. But I was trying to figure out how do I fit these pieces of the puzzle together to make everything fit? And the only answer I could come up with was to wake up earlier to go for my morning run, and then that would become my new kind of system to get through my day. At that point, I was not an early riser. This was kind of like a foreign concept. It sounded like torture, but yet I, I realized that this is the only way that I can squeeze everything in. So I got up early one morning, went for a run, and just fell in love immediately. Like, not only did I, I love running, but I realized there's something magical happening early in the morning during sunrise. Like, there's something that is better that's happening there that I was not experiencing. And so I continued to wake up early to train for my race. And then over the course of the next few months, I finished the race, but I still wanted to get up early and I wanted to use that time for other projects. And so it became this, this, this habit of mine to wake up and utilize those morning hours for something that was important to me. Uh, and then once I started to do that, to blog about it, uh, to talk to my, you know, my followers about it, I realized there's a podcast here. There's something I can, I can share on a bigger scale about these simple concepts of waking up early, being productive, having healthy habits in your day, you know, just simple concepts, but ones that have a really dramatic effect on how much you get done every day. Fantastic. You know, I, I have a very similar story myself. Uh, when I first got into running, again, find the time. Where do I find the time? And, and whether it's running, whether it's a new passion, it can be uh, very difficult to find that time. In fact, when I first started running and, and similar to you, start training for a, a half marathon and then a full marathon, I had two young kids at the time. Mm. And no joke, for about a two-year period, they didn't even know that dad was a runner because I was waking up so early. <laughs> right? wow. I, I had I had finished my run. I had taken off my sneakers. I, I had showered for the day. And I think one morning, my, my four-year-old son said, dad, you, you like to jog? I mean, this was two and a half years after uh, training uh, most mornings or, or many mornings early in the morning. So, so fantastic stuff. So, you know, when it comes to waking up early, I, I find that there's a lot of people who would like to do it, right? A lot of people would like to wake up earlier. It may have been a, a New Year's resolution. It may be something that they wanted to pursue. What do you find are some of the biggest obstacles that stand in people's way from making that jump or making that adjustment? I think for most people, waking up early is it's a mental shift, right? We all have these like simple habits that we've uh, over time just become the way we live. And so we, we come to believe that the way we live now is the only way we can live. And I think that, you know, my story is a simple example of I was not an early riser and then I became one. And so there was something that happened to make that possible. And I have found that the simplest thing to do is to find something that you really want to do with those early morning hours, right? The last thing I would want someone to do is to, you know, watch a video of some guy who has a podcast and be like, this guy said I should get up early, so I'm going to do it. Right? That's never going to stick. And maybe one day it will, but long term, the motivation, the reason to get up won't be there. And so like I, I began with my story was to wake up early to go for a run to make sure I had time for that thing I was passionate about. And so for most people, that's the, the key thing. Like You find that thing that you want to do, and all of a sudden, it's not difficult to go to bed a little earlier, to wake up a little bit earlier, to use your time a little differently. And all of a sudden, those obstacles, those excuses you've made for yourself don't really apply anymore because now you're looking forward to doing something that you've not been able to do up to that point. So for me, it's very simple. You find that thing you want to do and then you just, you build the time in for it. And ideally that time will be earlier in the day where now you can have that focused time to get those things done. 
So you're saying waking up early to binge watch Netflix probably isn't a motivator for <laughs> for for a lot of people, or or wake up early to aimlessly surf the uh, the internet probably is not going to uh, get a stick. Find something valuable, find something that means something to you. That's going to be your motivator in the morning. Yeah, totally. I, I, to the exact point about waking up to kind of you know search the internet aimlessly, I've had people tell me that's what they did, and they email me. And they're like, "Why can't I be more productive?" You know, at five thirty in the morning. I'm like, "Well, what are you actually doing with that time? And, and are those activities motivating of themselves? Like, do they cause you to think like I actually would love to be out of bed to do this? And if you're not like legitimately excited about what that thing is, like it's not a good fit. And you know, obviously, we we don't spend too many hours of our lives watching you know Netflix or surfing the web. And there's plenty of time to do that in the evening if you want to. But ideally, your morning hours are used for those most effective, highly productive activities. So so speaking about the evening or, or speaking about the night before, and let's mm. say someone wants to make that shift or, or make that adjustment, do you have a, a particular routine that, that you follow or do you have some things that you suggest to people that they do the night before so they can set themselves up for a great morning? Yeah, it's a great question because really an ideal morning begins the night before. And so for me, the key thing is an evening boundary. So for me personally, that means 8 p.m. And at 8 p.m., everything has to stop. That means there's no more television, there's no more computer, no more phone. All electronics have to be shut off because otherwise I will keep working, I will keep watching TV, like it will just continue, right? And I'll end up going to bed at midnight instead of, you know, 9.30. And so then my next morning is torture instead of a lot of fun. And so I'm trying to make that next morning as easy and as fun as possible. So to do that, I have to actually be in bed and asleep by a certain time. So for me, it's usually 9.30 or 10. And so to make sure that I'm actually in bed and actually asleep, there has to be this very definite shift between doing things and then slowing things down to prepare for bed. And so for me, yeah, an 8 p.m. boundary works well to cut those things off. And then I can shift into, you know, take a shower, read a book, and then go to sleep. Like simple activities that don't require, you know, a lot of electronics or distractions or things that would hold me back. And then ideally during that time, I'm also making a simple to-do list for the next morning. So I can write down like at 5 a.m. tomorrow, I'm going to do these three things. And as long as I know ahead of time what those are, I don't have the excuse to not do them because the next day I get up, my workout clothes are set out, the book I want to read is right there, whatever I need is ready. So there's fewer boundaries or fewer obstacles to get over when I get to that next morning. I, you know, I love that suggestion of spending some time with your to-do list uh, mm -hmm. the day before, which is going to be at least, you know, several hours before you actually get to that day. I think there's there's a real benefit of having that separation. It often gives us a bit of a, a higher level view of tomorrow, as opposed to starting the day with the to-do list where, you know, you're, you maybe just be a half hour from that next meeting or mm -hmm. some other crisis that's going to fall on your plate. Uh, so I love that. Planning out your to-do list, getting your workout clothes, getting yourself set up for a, a great day in the morning. Now, I'm sure you've come across uh, a number of people who maybe identify themselves as night owls. Um, you know, they, they stay up quite late, uh, midnight or maybe well beyond into the, uh, into the early parts of the, uh, of the morning. And maybe they've done this for some time. Uh, what do you say to those who, who feel that maybe getting up earlier is overrated or that, you know, <laughs> they shouldn't consider making that change? What, what do you say to some of those individuals? Well, it's a great question. Actually, I live in Nashville in Music City. So a lot of musicians have these very late nights and it's kind of built in, into their career. So for those people, they have kind of this like a lifestyle that warrants itself to later, you know, later sleeping patterns. And so that's one side of the equation is your your actual lifestyle will say, I have to go to, stay up late. The other side of the equation are people that have been choosing to do so for just whatever reason. And so regardless of which one you which camp you fall into there. It's about intentionality. It's about choosing how your time is spent. So you could say, oh, Jeff, a 5 a.m. wake-up call sounds like torture. I'm not going to do it. That's fine. But then the question is, what time will you commit to getting out of bed? And when you get up, what are you going to do? And it really can be that simple. You don't have to you know, wake up when the sun gets up to make your day effective. But you do have to know, when I get up, here's my plan to make my day effective. And so if you are a night owl and you want to stay that way, I'm totally fine with that. It's just a question of, but what are you doing with the time you have now? And if you're staying up till 3 o'clock in the morning just to you know, do whatever it is you happen to be doing, it's like that's less appealing, I think, than saying I was up till 3, but I was doing these things. And then tomorrow morning I have this plan and here my, you know, it's all laid out and ready to go. It's, it's a very type A persona on all this. But like, I think that that allows you to say I'm being intentional with my time. I know what I'm doing. There's a plan for it. There's a reason for it. 
I find that those people who have thought about it ahead of time, ultimately, I think they end up choosing to wake up earlier by default because they see over time that actually works better for their energy cycles. It works better for their focus. Uh, there's fewer distractions from other people. So it's really about self-awareness and knowing what's best for you. And then when you know that, make the right choice from there. Yeah, I think that's so true in terms of what you're engaged in later in the evening or in those final hours of your day. Uh, you know, if you happen to be a, an author and you find yourself doing your your very best work uh, late at night and you're writing many, many pages, well, well that's great. But uh, I think, you know, there's, there's a pretty large percentage of people who are staying up later and later and they're not actually being that productive, right? They're not really engaged in activities that are, are pushing themselves forward or pushing their careers or, or helping their families, whatever it may be. Um, it's often something a little less. So I love how you've touched on, you know, those motivating tools and how, yeah, sometimes it's our lifestyles or a, a new goal, whether it's a marathon, whether it's something else big, uh, a big change in our lives that may make that uh, make that adjustment possible. Now, how about when it comes to uh, technology or, or tools or applications? Is there anything in particular that, that you use or possibly recommend that make mornings that much uh, that much easier? Well, it's a great question. I know that you're a big fan of Trello. I use a similar system called Nozbe. That's N-O-Z-B-E. It's basically a glorified to-do list. It's a task manager. And basically what it allows me to do is structure my day in a way that makes sense to me in a list format. Uh, So for a long time, I used calendars. Now I kind of have this hybrid model between a calendar and a to-do list where the to-do list kind of wins out. Like It's the thing that tells me, here's the order that I'm going to do my day in. Here are the things I'm going to work with. And I can shift those things around very easily. So Nozbe for me allows me to do that. Uh, there's a lot of applications that are similar to that. Asana is one of those. Uh, Todoist is one. Uh, it doesn't. The tool to me though isn't the point. Uh, the point is that you find a system that allows you to that works with your brain, and, and you think you see it. You think like, this is how I want to operate. This is the way that I like to position my day and can make the puzzle work, right? Because there's a lot of tools that I'll utilize and go. This is not the way my brain thinks. This is not how I want to go about my day. And then I find one that I like, and it's like, oh, snap, I got this, let's do this. And so you find that tool that works for you, you find the one that allows you to organize your time, and then you stick to that tool. This is the biggest thing I see people do all the time. They'll get a new app, they use it for two days, and they're like, this tool sucks. Like, it doesn't though, because you didn't invest enough of your life into it to really get the value from it. And so what I find what's best is you pick something that you think is a a good possible tool for you to use and then just dive in 100%. So when I, you know, onboard myself into Nosby, I put every personal, every professional goal in my life, every task, everything was in there. And then I committed to it for at least 30 days and said, I'm going to give this thing a real legitimate shot. And 30 days later, like it was just part of my lifestyle. It was the thing I wanted to continue to use because I understood the program. I knew how I knew all of its you know features. I knew how to use it well. And I had optimized that system for my life. And I think that's a really big missing piece with technology is that we just want to download this latest cool app. And then we delete it the next day or we just or we forget about it. Like you really got to dive in and say, this is my tool. This is the thing I'm going to commit to. And when you do that, that's where the value really shows up. I, I think that's so true. It's so easy to download something new, right? And, and there always is something new, right? There's always going to be something new in the App Store or the Google Play Store. Uh, there's certainly no shortage of productivity apps. And mm-hmm. yeah, you, you have to invest in it. You have to dedicate yourself to at least uh, an appropriate trial period mm-hmm. before you can say, "I'm going to I'm going to go on to the uh, onto the next thing." So, Jeff, I know you're you're known for the for the 5 a.m. miracle and and the podcast and being sort of the morning guy. But I know you also help people out in productivity much more beyond just getting up early. So so what are some of your uh, best productivity tips for the rest of the day? What's sort of uh, something that you recommend to, to most of your clients uh, uh, when it comes to getting the most out of the rest of their day, not just their morning? It's a great question. I think that a lot of the same strategies that I use in the morning actually can be applied later in the day. As an example of that, focus blocks of time. It's something I know that you're a big fan of. I know that this is a thing that has worked wonders in my own life, which really just says that I'm going to carve out a set of time where I am distraction free, where I can guarantee that I will do one specific task until it's completed or until the timer runs out. Either way, I have a block of time where I'm not going to have a phone call. I'm not going to have a coworker knocking on my door. I'm not going to have distractions that most of us just kind of unintentionally let into our lives on a constant basis. And so you have to really be intentional about this to say, I'm going to guarantee a certain block of time, usually for a very important task or one that requires a lot of creativity or one that requires a lot of thought, 
because those are the tough ones that need a distraction-free environment. And so when you have those built into your day, whether it's like, you know, as soon as you get to the office by nine o'clock, you're on your first focus block. And then right after lunch is the next focus block. Like you, you kind of get those into your schedule on a routine. And then you can tell your coworkers like, hey guys, don't talk to me from nine to 10. I'm not available. And they will listen. And hopefully they'll do the same thing with their own work. And the next thing you know, the whole office culture that everybody is having their focus time and then everybody is getting more stuff done. And so for me, like that's a phenomenal way to say we're all going to get more done because we're not going to distract each other and trying to do our best work. Yeah, there, there's something really powerful about being deliberate with your time mm. rather than just being dictated by the next email or the next phone call or, or something else that comes across your desk. Uh, no matter what your working situation, whether you are uh, self-employed or, or whether you work for a large organization, I mean, you're in control, right? Mm. It, it's your job. It's <laughs> your life. It's your career. Um, sometimes we need to start acting like it. So so I love that. Be deliberate. Block out some time. Block out your schedule for your uh, most important work. Well, Jeff, it's been absolutely fantastic having you here on Simpletivity. Where can people learn more about uh, Jeff Sanders and the 5AM Miracle? Well, great question. And thank you for being on the show today. I love the fact that I had a chance to be here and talk to you. Um, JeffSanders.com is the website. Uh, my podcast, The 5 A.M. Miracle, is on iTunes. I can find my book, The 5 A.M. Miracle, also on Amazon. So I'm all over the web. Just uh, Google me. You'll find me. <laughs> Fantastic, Jeff. Well, well, thank you again for uh, for joining us today. And uh, you know, for the rest of the viewers here on Simpletivity, uh, whether you're watching this bright and early at uh, at 5 a.m. Or, or late in the evening, we hope that we've given you some uh, food for thought. I know Jeff's given me some great ideas how I'm going to maybe change, adjust some of my evening habits mm. so I can have even that much more of a powerful morning. And uh, remember, being productive does not need to be difficult. In fact, it's very simple.